Hello guys and welcome back to another video for our helpful tools uh, section here. We're going to be uh, taking a look at how to create a uh, custom symbol for a uh, for a model file that we got. Um, the model file that we're going to be using today is going to be one from uh, from International Rectifier. It's that one that we had in our last video that I kind of showed a quick rundown how to create the um, automatically generate the automatically generated one, which is by choosing create symbol. However, this time we'll go ahead and create our own. Let's say I want to have the actual uh, uh, the actual looking MOSFET symbol, power MOSFET symbol. So what we're going to do is we're going to go file and uh, we're going to take and uh, do a new schematic, but we want a new symbol. Okay, so this is a symbol. Okay, if you notice up here, it has what looks like a little logic AND gate or something. It's different than the uh, MOSFET looking one, which is a ASC, which is a uh, schematic. We want the symbol file. So the important thing here is to make sure and get your one, two, and three. Make sure you place it in the right spot. This is drain gate and then source. I'll show you how to do that. So first, we're going to take and we'll go ahead and your tools are a little different in that that uh, you have draw and now you've got line rectangle circle arc uh, line style you've got text um, you've got uh, add pin port that's how you add your uh, ports you've even got some attributes that you can put in uh, which we, we won't mess with we're just going to do add pin port but anyway we'll click on that Here's what you can label this. You could type in drain if you want, or gate, or whatever you want to label it. The thing that actually designates and links up with the uh, with the other file is the netlist order. And so this one is going to be the uh, number one, which we said was the drain. Now you can have it actually display this label on the top, left, right, or bottom of that port, or you can have it where it just doesn't view it at all and of course you have all the other little you can offset it and vertical text all that stuff I'm just gonna leave it where it's not visible we'll click OK and this is the drain so I don't know we'll plop it up here for now and then I'm gonna press the letter P to bring up another one this is going to be let's see hold on but first let me check we've got drain we need gate and then source so I'm gonna press P and then we've got the gate okay and that'll be I don't know, somewhere out here and then press the letter P again, and then this is going to be the source. Okay, it's going to be I don't know somewhere down here. Let's make sure we got the right amount. We've got one, two, three, four in the middle. One, two, three, four. We'll kind of keep everything spaced out appropriately. Now we're going to use the L key. We're going to draw a line. What we're going to do is this is the drain. So I'm going to draw. Oh, I don't know. Maybe something like this. And I press escape and that takes that takes that away. That finished is what you're doing. So there's that. Um, I think I'm going to take and I will draw our little line here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna duplicate that. Make that a couple three times. We'll Kind of center it up here. Grab another one. Put it somewhere around in there. And then we'll grab our line tool again. And we'll get kind of in the center of this. Like so. And then we'll grab another line. And all I'm doing is just pressing the L key for line. Go ahead and draw our arrow here since this is an in channel device. Okay, there's that. And then we've got the uh, main line that goes down here. And we've got the line that's right through here. Oh, you know what? I just not paying attention what I'm doing. Move this down here. Oh, no. And the F keys still work, so your move and 
whatnot still work. Uh, and this is not long enough. There we go. And so for some reason, it doesn't like to drag very well. I don't know why. But the drag tool doesn't usually work very well. So I just, I just redraw it. Okay. There's that. Oh, I forgot. There is a, uh, let's see, there is a diode on these. Let's do that. Come somewhat in the middle. This, that, like that. Not exactly. Not exactly perfect. Let's kind of square that up a little bit. Yeah, close enough. Close enough for this tutorial. Uh, we'll draw our lines here. Oh. Well, that doesn't look very good. I'm trying to do this somewhat quickly. Not working out like I want it to. Okay. Okay. There's that. And now, if I want, I can do circle thing. Oh yeah, I forgot. In the circle, you draw kind of like a square. We want to make a circle type deal uh, and then kind of square it up there now let's go ahead and we'll save this as an um, I usually like to put it in my uh, in my directory so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place it in my LTC LT spice LIB and then in SM symbol and I like to go ahead and create like a USR folder that's kind of like a user created folder and we'll just name this um, power and moss there we go Save. now that saves that saves our little drawing here so now if we go back to our schematic we click on our add symbol we can go to our u user one and power moss okay and there's our power moss fit Boy, that looks horrible. I should have made that longer. And that, that's, that's, that's another thing. If you decide that you want to change it, uh, you can. Just delete it and come back in here. Move your stuff around that you need to move around. Yeah, or delete. <laughs> whatever you need to do. Um, let's go to our line tool again. We'll go from there. And like I say, at this point, it's just making things look pretty. Um, so far as helping out the functionality of it, the square that gets produced when you uh, the square that gets produced when you uh, when you do the auto generate symbol will work just as fine. Functionally, it is just exactly the same. So even though it may not look just gorgeous, um, the functionality is there. So anyway. So there's, there's our MOSFET. And to test this out, we'll just build a circuit real quick. Um, put a resistor, and get a voltage source, uh, and we'll connect this stuff up. Uh, like so. All right, let's do 12 volts, and we'll do 1 ohm, so we should get an amp or so through there. Um, let's duplicate this and we'll put it in line here. There we go. Yeah, 12 volts is fine. And then uh, let's hit go. We'll do, I don't know, 15 milliseconds or so. Oh, and I forgot. We still have to do, we still have to import our component. My forgot about that this over here so we still need to do our dot lib okay and click browse which um, for those of you that missed that 
uh, that uh, that one video uh, about how to do this. You you click on your dot option spice directives, type in lib, place it, then go back and right click on it, and you'll get this menu, and you'll choose browse, and of course we'll navigate to where our our uh, international rectifier part is. Hit OK. Then uh, we go to this, and what we'll do is we'll put in, oops, we'll put in the name. So we go back to our file, and it's an IR F67, all that stuff. So we'll copy that, go back, right click, and underneath value, we paste that in. OK. Now we should be good. Oh, I know it's wrong. When you do this, you always got to make sure, and in this prefix, um, you always got to type in an X. So that way, it it see it determines the type of circuit element. If you put an X in, then it's it's whatever you want. It's just it's whatever you want. So it's whatever is defined by this value. So we'll put an X in. Hit OK. We should be able to hit go. Yep, there it is. Oh, well, maximize this. Or no, I don't want to maximize that. Uh, just a minute. Let's minimize. Oops. Let's minimize this one. Minimize that one. We'll make these. There we go. Okay, that looks better. Now we click on it, and we get about 12 amps through it, as well as you know we can take uh, voltage measurements. It tells you the voltage across it, the voltage here, you know, all that stuff. So there we go. So that's pretty much how you create your own custom symbol. Uh, fairly easy. You just got to make sure and keep track of where your netlists are. Make sure you you're in sync with the way this is labeled. You know, and the way your labeling is. Make sure your netlists are in sync. And then yeah, and then you just kind of draw just like you're sketching anything else. But uh, you just make sure you have your your points in the right place. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and then that, that one X thing, you put that in there so that that way it knows what type of circuit element it's looking at. And of course you want it to be generic since you're adding this in. And then, like I said, that also doing that X thing makes this a generic part too. So any other type of uh, MOSFET uh, that's NMOS or whatever that's a power MOSFET, you can use this symbol with as long as it has the same uh, netlist hierarchy. The 1, 2, and 3 is drain gate source. If it's different, what you can always do is you can always come in here into the actual symbol and move those around. If you need to change it around for a specific device, you can always just go in there and change that around. And then you get you get what you need. So fairly slick. So anyway, that's basically how to uh, do your own custom symbols. So I'm uh, I'm also I'll probably that'll probably be it for this video since this will be just custom symbols. I'll probably do another video on how to use the um, switch function. Uh, which is basically a voltage controlled switch. Um, you can throw these in and there's a kind of a multitude of ways to configure this. You have to use your, your dot options and you have to do a dot model and things like that to actually get this to work. Otherwise, it's, it's I don't know, it, it, it doesn't work on its own. I'll put it that way. And what you can do is you can then add a voltage source to it and you know how in a voltage source you can choose all these different um, things. Uh, like you can use a pulse or a PWL or which is piecewise linear exponential sign or whatever. You can basically uh, turn this on in these different methods. So let's say you want to do, let's say you're doing maybe short circuit transient or something like that. You're wanting to short out something. You can take you can take one of these and you know place it in here like this um, and hook it up. You want to do let's what happens if I short this source? What's going to happen? Well, then you can set it up. Um, you can set up a voltage source that hooks up to this and you can do a pulse and you can make it uh, pulse this to where it'll be really fast, it'll short it and unshort it you know really quick like within microseconds or however whatever you whatever you put and that way you can see the the transient response of the circuit or something you know what I mean just uh, kind of cool little goodies like that and so I think that's what we'll, we'll save in store for next time uh, the next video will be on the uh, switch switch component and then um, I believe that uh, oh the, and then the last thing that we'll do will be um, uh, resistors that you can 
uh, control in that same kind of fashion, kind of like kind of like a voltage controlled resistor type of a deal. You can make it where if you have um, you want to create, you know, maybe impulse currents or something like that, or you want to create um, some type of resistor that varies, or create po a potentiometer or something. I'll show you how to um, how to do that. That'll be uh, in the next couple of videos. Will be how to do some of those uh, transient measurements. How you can kind of dig dig a little deeper into the coding of spice and how to send spice directives to the engine and get uh, get different things to behave in different ways. And then probably our final. Uh, video that we'll do for the SPICE uh, series will probably be how to do kind of a worst case analysis. Um, the only thing that LT SPICE lacks that others have, like P-SPICE or Multisim or things like that, is the others will do a Monte Carlo distribution, which I don't know if you, those of you that don't know what that is. It's basically a worst case scenario. It'll, you can take and put in your tolerances. Um, basically, you have your toler percent tolerance. You can put in all those, and it will run a a multiple run simulation that will show you kind of in different steps um, in different steps of that within that percentage window it'll show you um, what you're gonna what, what's gonna happen when all of the all the components move around um, within one percent resistances or five percent or twenty percent or ten percent or whatever you're doing um, it'll show you what it'll do it'll run multiple simulations so you can see that kind of swath of, of tolerance and there's a way that you can do it with LT Spice. Um, the others, like I said, P Spice and those have an actual built-in function that you just fill out. You, it has like kind of like a little, kind of like a little window, kind of like these or something that has its own little interface. But you and you fill it out for the tolerances. Um, LT Spice does not have that. However, that does not mean that it can't do it. And so that's what we'll be uh, investigating for our final video. Will be how to do the. Uh, a Monte Carlo-ish, I guess you would say, type of a type of a run. So you can basically do a worst case run and run your tolerances around. So that's all I got for this one. Take care, guys, and happy coding. Please send me any uh, comments, questions, uh, anything I can be of help with. Thank you very much.